Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. Four ghosts that entirely transformed video gaming in 1980. Pac-Man's opponents, each built with a unique code, algorithmic traits presenting different challenges. I remember being really scared of Blinky. Blinky is the aggressive chaser. Blinky, well, yes, I hate Blinky very much. He's always chasing me. It is basic artificial intelligence. For many though, modern AI looks more like this. The 2021 film Free Guy, set inside a game world, Ryan Reynolds plays a non-player character or NPC whose coding allows him to become self-aware. Spoiler, this technology isn't possible yet. But outside Hollywood, the next generation of video game developers is hard at work to change that. Especially here in Japan, this is Tokyo's Rikkyo University. It feels good to be back on a university campus. You feel the passion, you see the curiosity, and also the drive to pursue the big what's next. And in fact, the students here who were reared on technology and they're fluent in digital video design, they're the ones that are gonna dictate the future of AI and gaming. Professor Yuichiro Mayake runs the university's programs in artificial intelligence and science. The research his students are doing at the intersection of AI and video gaming is years ahead of industry adoption, he says. <laughs> the role of the universities in the academic research of game AI is uh, test many possibilities to apply deep learning technologies into games. AI is used in design modeling. Just imagine endless open worlds all created by a computer. Or problem solving, like how to move our hero from one end of a dungeon to the other. Or, like Pac-Man's ghosts, AI can help make NPCs smarter, more adaptable. Zhou Ji Tao graduated from Rikyo last year. He built this model to research machine learning. Until now, NPCs constantly move in a certain pattern. People probably get used to it quickly and enjoy playing less and less. This NPC, which uses deep learning, does not have a fixed pattern, so it has a greater variety of movements than in the past, which is more fun for the player. This is the popular Japanese game Puyo Puyo. It's like Tetris, but more complicated. Master's student Koto Fukuchi built an AI agent that helps the game learn over time. So the AI on the left has been learning for about two weeks, and it has been playing against a copy of itself for two weeks. The AI on the right has been learning for an extra week, and as a result, the AI on the right has gradually become faster at laying down the puyos to get four in a row. And this is generating for the very first time. This is AI playing AI. This AI is smarter than that AI. Oh, that just got a good reaction. Oh, the chain reaction is happening. Across town at the University of Tokyo, PhD student Shen Chuan Wan, along with other researchers, build a mini grid game featuring AI that can navigate a maze, even one with low visibility. What does this mean for video game development in the industry? In the future, uh, the, the AI developers can just uh, use much less cost to build artificial intelligence agents with much stronger performance. Yeah. And we also see that it may have a, a huge impact not only in the industrial of video games, but also some other related application areas. Those areas, he says, are limitless. Autonomous robots powered by AI that can explore underwater, even outer space. In these game worlds, that could enable NPCs that adapt, create better dialogue, Ravens, show no mercy. or tell creative stories tailored for individual players. Of course, building the perfect game is about more than tech. 
AI researchers have for a long time tried to make these non-player characters better. And you may not want machine learning to help you with this. It may actually ruin the game, because no one likes an impossible game. An impossible game is not good, it's broken. And when you achieve the impossible in Pac-Man, that's what happens to the game. It breaks. Because we'll let you in on a little secret. The game's creator didn't think winning was possible. 256 you clear 256 stages and the game stops there. So it's not a game over, but rather the game didn't expect players to go that far. It thought the player wouldn't get to such a difficult stage. So getting the perfect score means that you held on until the game stopped. The end is a pattern that produces noise. So during the game, if you need to take a break, like a bathroom break, if you park Pac-Man here, you can leave him here for a few minutes and the ghosts can't get to you. They can't see you. Jake Goldberg used his own patterns, memory, determination, and maybe a little luck against four ghosts that changed video gaming forever. I mean, when you can have something like Pac-Man, something that can bring so much fun and joy to millions of people around the world for over 40 years, I think that's really special. Tech that continues to evolve, connect, teach, and maybe even give us all a little hope.